Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to episode three of Rockhold, the Gift of Shadow. So, it is time for new arrivals. People are coming from Sand Vaults, or I'm pretty sure they do. So, Ubul Hildagger, the Lone Admiral. Yep, that's Sand Vault. So, this man, furnace operator, huh? Okay. Zazit Mirrod Ride. We have here. Well, a competent gem cutter. This one looks like he never found something to do in sand walls. Or is he from sand walls? Yep, yep, yep. An Unib clasp weakened. Another person with no solidified jobs or anything. He's been part of the metalsmiths guild in sand walls. <laughs> well, these people. They will find their new professions here in Sandwalls for sure. Ah, uh, Rockhold. <laughs> yeah, it's still... Uh, it, it happens so dawned quickly. Okay, so we're going to go today for a lot of wonderful little things. So first off, I want to... Get the... Uh, trash destruction system going. Yeah. Some good old fashioned dwarven engineering. And the other part is we do need some things that we can transform into food. Okay, that's a uh, weird wording. What I'm trying to say is we need the farms. And for that reason, we're going to make those little water reservoirs happen. Put a hatch on it. This is my standard irrigation system. Used many, many times in the past. There goes the hatches. And now we just link the levers there. And before we know it, we have all the water we need to muddy up this entire room. And then it's all gorgeous. Now, today I want to do a little bit of expeditionary work downstairs as well, because we really need more than just siltstone and dirt to make this a proper fortress. We have a, a couple of things already going on for ourselves. I think uh, we should get ourselves a tanner and a butcher going. These are always really good to have. Was that double butcher? Yes, that's what it is. This was not what I wanted. There we go. So it's summer and well, should we try fishing? We should definitely try fishing. Fishing is one of the uh, dirty, cheapest, easiest ways of uh, getting food down. But uh, all right. My bookkeeper is a fisher dwarf and well, I don't see any fish anywhere. Let's try one thing though. Let's see. This area, cave lobster. Yeah, well, you see muskmelon roast, turnip, wine, biscuits. We're starting to utilize the things that I have gathered on the surface, which is just, uh, just a good thing. Okay, okay, I think that'll work for now. No, we don't have mechanisms right now. Hmm? That is uh, not good. We need to fix that immediately. Simply because if we wait too long, we cannot uh, link up the mechanisms with the with the chamber anymore because the chamber is flooded. But I think here we have Cattenvale Mountain to uh, under the. And, you know, Dwarf of the Daytime. So, Catten Vale Mountain. She's a great miner. We're going to... We're going to... Watch... What's up with her or check her out more... In a hot second. Stop. What you're doing with these? Give them free. Thank you. 
There we go. So, let's follow Catan. Uh, oh, wait a sec. I, I should better try to give her something to do. So, let's uh, do this like that. Let's go downstairs 20 elevation levels. I'm pretty sure she will pick up the job. All right. So, uh, or she's going to make more turret mechanisms. That's also okay. Now then. Uh, wrong board button. She's incredibly brave in the face of looming danger. Perhaps a bit foolhardy. Hello, Caverns. You have to wait, Caverns. She has a very calm demeanor. She tends to avoid any physical confrontations, and she works to square this natural tendency with a respect of martial prowess. She's quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture. She does not have, have a great aesthetic sensitivity, she's conf and she is conflicted by this, as she values artwork and its creation. So... Yeah... She doesn't get the feel for art, but she, she likes art. These dwarfs, they are sometimes very balked. Huh. She has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others. She tends to make a small mess with her own possessions, and she doesn't seek out excitement. She has a greedy streak, and she generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She's not particularly interested in what others think of her, and she has a sense of duty. The perfect mining dwarf. Lona, a little bit weird at all ends and odds, and... Well, welcome, cat. So, let's see what her preferences are. Oh, wait, I can't unpause. So, she likes Marcosite. What is that even? I can't even remember that I ever saw that in my 750 or how many hours of Dwarf Fortress. Jeez. Platinum. All right. Green Tourmaline. Shat Tooth. Earrings. Sheep for their wool. And the sight of the aquamarine rocks. When possible, she prefers to consume turnip wine. I think we can even make that here. Whip wine flour and flax seeds. She absolutely detests cave spiders. Okay. So... Catten, we have a, sort of a situation as far as you can see here. So we found a winding passage there. So let's see, how did this all come together? Okay, so here we have the thing. This is not Caverns Level 1. I'm shocked. Where is Caverns 1 then? Okay, now... That's the big surprise. We we are obviously living right next to the cabins. Okay, so far so good. We will now make sure that we have a way out here. And we are going to delete all further jobs here. It's oh, a lot of them there. Okay. We didn't get too far, didn't we? No, not at all. Not at all. So, we're going to close off this hole there. So nothing can leak into the fortress. And then we got to evaluate the situation. So, there's... Another stone that I don't know how to pronounce. Is it Chalcedony? Chalcedony? I don't know. Maybe you know. But I, I hope I, I, I remember looking it up. Okay, so this is quite the shocker for me. Because that means we, we probably need to do some good old-fashioned expedition tunneling here, huh? Because the caverns could be anywhere. The cabin's tier one, that is. Let's see what we'll find here. This is one really, really challenging situation in all in all, in, in all honesty. As I didn't foresee that we again would get a uh, map that has such a close proximity to the surface and the caverns. Is this a thing on this entire world site? I really may kind of wonder. If this entire continent is uh, working on out like that. We have found Harlequin Apol. I've never seen that one for before. Sounds like a uh, colorful stone. 
definitely need to check that out for reals. Okay. I'm ordering them to be dug out directly, as these are quite a nice value. So let's assign our broker. Hmm, do we have a better appraiser by now? Or not? So... Ugh. I did put up one of my starter people as a good appraiser. But the stat is so hot to find. Let's see, appraiser. Ah, here, wonderful. Thob, the proficient appraiser. Because that is what it's all really boiling down to, your appraisal skill. I'm so happy we have these uh, search bars by now. They are quite the modernization. Okay, so we will have quite a lot of church to work with. That's the first truth that we see. The other point is I have literally no clue where the uh, tier one caverns are supposed to be so far. Quite happy about all the gemstone findings though. It's always a pleasant surprise. Okay. So yeah, that uh, compactifies our entire subterranean territory quite a lot. Because basically we have to expect that we are going to hit the caverns anytime soon. I mean, I'm going to do the same experiment probably one level above. Nah, that doesn't sound right. So did we reach the stone types? I mean, this is ridiculous. Makes me kind of wonder if the caverns are in the aquiferous area. Oh, well. I'm quite uh, dumbfounded here. Well, we'll see what that'll do. Either way, we're getting a lot of church to work with, so siltstone and church seem to be so far the only stones that are available to us here. Hm. What a... What a weird situation we're finding ourselves in here. I never have seen anything like that, and... Well, I mean, this is what I, why I love Dwarf Fortress. It always brings me back up to the point where I feel like I've never seen anything like that. This is a very regular feeling between Dwarf Fortress and me. Yeah. So. I mean. Here. There is. There is a hint. This is a passageway. So. If here is a passageway. Huh. Well, maybe the caverns are somewhere here around, or somewhere there around. Let's try it. Let's uh, do a uh, proximity mining operation. Okay, so there's a giant mole. These are thieving or mischievous creatures? Oh, huh. I don't know. All right. So, I think I need to put up some more proficient stockpiling methods at some point down the road. But for now, well, I still try to get acquainted with my surroundings here. Just trying to make a uh, to, to make a sense out of it, I should rather say, because it's uh, really weirding me out. But the good point about our situation is we have a lot of uh, trees down there on the map. The problem though is we we are living in a savage biome. That means there is a good chance of agitated animals happening when we are felling too many trees out there. It's uh, not, no, I, I'm putting down this uh, wrong. This will guaranteed happen at some point in our story. It's just the question is when. And uh, I do know for 100% sure that chopping trees is speeding up the hostility of the biome. I don't really know how agitated animals work in detail, but I do know that chopping trees is pissing them off. That is one thing I'm 100% sure. So, 
the digging process is halted a little bit by all the smoothing jobs that we have today. I mean, this passageway connects to the tier two caverns. Okay. Usually you have these passageways in the vicinity of the actual cavern layer. Or so I thought. Well, Ketten is living up to her to her personality. While all are smoothing, she likes to go it alone. I love it. Sometimes I really wonder how deep the simulation of these character traits of the people in the game really works. Always kind of wonder about that. So, well, bothers me, but what can we do? And it's time for some fundamentals. We require thrones, doors, and tables. Basic goods, can't live without them. We are going to make the doors out of uh, chert. Or, no, the doors will be siltstone and the tables and the thrones will be chert. I'm gonna be so sad about this being just a two colored fortress if this is uh, what it boils down to. All right, so let's put a couple of these on the permanent tab as well as beds. We we always want beds. Okay, so this will keep the people of Rockhold a little bit busy while we're uh, watching what the excavations find. But so far, Things are getting weirder and weirder here. I mean, at least we have now a, um, a first impression, a first glimpse of the situation. We can now decide to dig down deeper, most likely here. Yep. So let's see what we're going to find there. I mean, I really am very, very eager to find new rock types. I mean, I'm happy to like that we are finding that many gemstones so far. We cleaved open a couple of pockets. Let's see. But it doesn't seem as if we are finding anything here except for a ton of chert. I mean, that's okay since we are just uh, kind of like decided a hot minute ago that we are going to make a... Uh, lot of our uh, furniture of this fort out of that, but I think this uh, sector here, we're not going to find anything there. Anyways, let's expedite the stair digging because I'm a curious nature. Those hallways around there, I got, they, they can't wait. They're not that important. All right, the food and drink stockpiles are filling up now. Shale, we have found another rock type finally, for good. Claystone. So we are getting into sedimentary rock now. Ta caverns tier two? I'm, I'm, ah. there's schist. So that's a sign that we found another layer. So let's go downstairs another 10 levels. Red tourmaline, where did we strike that? Hmm. You see. Let's not miss that opportunity. Okay, so a lot of browns. Dark browns. Slate. Huh, somebody of my OG uh, characters loved that stuff, I remember. So there goes Slate. Let's go 10 more down. Always exciting. Drilling a hole in the ground and, uh, and watching when they're fine. Gabbro. So, well, we are getting closer to the center of the world, I guess. 
Good old Gabro. Old chap. It's one of the most reliably uh, findable materials out there. Ah, oh, look at that. We we hit rock bottom. Um, one of the most reliably uh, materials out there that you can find that is magma proof. You eventually will find that stuff hmm, somewhere. Most likely. So, yeah. Elevation goes down to minus 57. But we can't dig further here. So, well... Let's dig these directions. And see if we hit some warm stone somewhere. Alright. So this is yet another world, uh, another part of the world where things are very close together. This is the same as in sand vaults. I really wonder if the entire land of twinkles is like that. As you see here, this is one big continent, and I'm starting to wonder if this is just what this continent looks like. This is just the uh, entire thing happening there. It's gonna be very exciting all in all, not gonna lie. So here's warm stone, just like I expected. We are going to find some somewhere. We're going to go now this way. Stairs. And then we're gonna probe and see if we can find the magma sea. All right, we haven't found Kevin's one. We haven't found Kevin's two, uh, Kevin's three, but we found Kevin's two. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure we will find the rest of what we're looking for while we're uh, probing for new stone types. Because I want all the stone types that we're stone times mm, stone types that we have here. Ah, look, there's more warm rock. So, ah, that's perfect. Well, let's punch a hole in the ground and see if there's magma. All right. So far, so good. That means we got to design our way around these things. You've discovered a big magma sea, just like I had expected. Good thing that we didn't cleave open that wall. It wouldn't have ended well, just like I expected. Okay. So we got to delete a couple of these jobs and a couple of those jobs. And there is a high likelihood that, oh God. Okay, so step one, we need to uh, cover the hole in the ground that we just smashed open. So no fire creatures can leak into the fortress. There we go. Because they will op use this opening gladly to wreak havoc upon us. So we found, obviously, adamantine. So that is one story. So, look, there is metal after all in Rockhold. <laughs> and we thought we'd not find, we'd not be finding anything. Oh dear. Is that a megalomaniac plot coming up? We'll see about that. Alright. This also does show me, though, that the excavations here are darned important. And I think we should definitely try and do an expedition like this here as well. And something deep down inside of me says that we're going to use chert as a material for our fort on many more ends. Maybe we will even build the outside citadel out of that. We'll see that, we'll see. There's a lot of materials that we can quarry up. And the next big step is going to find a way of, um, organizing all my stockpiles and such. 
All right. We do find a nice amount of gemstone. A lot of these opals. But what we don't find, obviously, the caverns. Look at us go. Holy. That's a lot. And also, love to see how our trio of miners, they are all masters by now, high masters or grandmasters even. And the speed that they're whacking these rocks is something entirely else now. So, that is one, one weird thing. So I really gotta say, ah, people are coming. Um, I really gotta say that this is one of the weirdest environments that I've been in so far. The Baroness Consort is arriving. Wonderful. Quickly prepare the trade hub so we can do the trading. All right. I mean, with all the gemstone that we found so far, definitely can do some trading. So, rough gemstones. Let's bring... All the uh, Harlequin and Harlequin Opals. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to overburden my dudes now, but uh, we'll see about that. The next thing I want to do is there shall be a stockpile or gemstone. Just a tiny one back there. Good. The other thing I want are. Wooden bins. Store things in. Okay. So the gemstone is slowly flowing in. We got all the time that we need. The, uh, the trader stays really long. If I learned anything in my time, then that the trader is really staying for a darn long time. All right. Broker is drinking. And let's do the diplomacy part. So, I'd wager that any form of metal bars is going to be very, very desired here. So, let's order iron, bronze, and uh, no copper? Why? I don't understand that. Sand walls does have ample supply of copper. Hmm. Weird. So we are going to order only these two types. Earrings. Okay. That is not what I had expected. Let's see what we can buy. Electrum and trifle pewter. Wonderful. Just what I needed. Not. Ostrich leather water skin. Yeah. Toy axe. Alright, so a weapon. Let's see how far we can take it. Two gear suits of gear. Boots. A shield. A helmet. Some gauntlets. My, my interest is uh, very clear. I want to pilfer together a suit of weapons for somebody here to defend this sorry old place. And we are going to buy ourselves fresh delivery of plump helmets, I guess. Alright. Let's get some of these juicy, uh, juicy guys on the table as well. And let's do the trade. And we are going to offer the rest of the gems as a gift to the mountain home. And now we are going to... Can I cancel that now? Is that possible? Yes. Beautiful. All right. So we got that. 
I don't want to give away everything we got, but I think it is a vital part of our, of our story that we are starting to give something back to the mountain home. We are so well, to our home base because we want to support our civilization and uh, wealth is one of the best ways to do this. So let's see, that's not a dangerous tree. It's also no dangerous trees. Good. I shall not cut any trees above the pasture, you see. So my good friends, it's sadly time to say goodbye for yet another day. It's been a really, really fun ride so far. I really don't understand where in our mock's name those uh, caverns tier one are supposed to be, but I am pretty sure we will find that out one time soon in the next episode, I hope. <laughs> Leave me your comments, drop me a thumbs up, and give me a subscription if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very happy about that. I also want to point towards the description box. There's plenty of links to go around over there, and you can find the other Dwarf Fortress sagas that I did there. There's the Banner of Shadow, obviously, Season 1, Building of Sand Walls. Season 2, we're currently playing that. And there's also the Savage Lands saga, with five fortresses. It's all done already. And it's just waiting for you. Check it out if you want to see more. And of course, there's my Discord. There is my Twitch, where I also stream. And of course, you can also check out Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee. I'd be very delighted to have you there. Check out also the channel membership system. That'll allow you to watch earlier the Dwarf Fortress episodes or whatever I have already scheduled for release. It all ends up there, freshly available for the channel members. That said, I want to say thanks to all of you supporting the channel, and thanks especially to you, yes, you right here, right now. You watched this video until the very bitter end, through all my ramblings about self-advertisement and all those obnoxious things. I appreciate you. So, hope you had a good time, I hope you're coming on back for the next one, and uh, let's see what we're going to experience here because obviously there's everywhere water i i start to wonder if the uh, tier one cabins are actually in the water we'll see about that see you on the next one bye bye